Hello! Cheers! Happy Thirsty Thursday it is. I didn't make homebrew Wednesday, so we're having Thirsty Thursday. This is the Nova Lager Czech Pilsner Nova Czech, as I called it. That's, um, I guess, I suppose it's been a week in the keg now. Uh, no, it's been more than a week, maybe two weeks in the keg now. And it's good, it's really good. It's not as clear as it should be, or I'd like it to be, but hey, hazy lager, it's a thing, isn't it? So why not? Oh, needed that. So that's 5.5% Czech Pilsner, using the Nova Lager yeast. Um, the Bocanova, the traditional Boc that I brewed using the yeast cake from this. Uh, Nova Lager yeast is done and kegged and I have to say wow seven came out seven percent and is absolutely gorgeous I'll just do a wee get a wee glass I don't want too much of that I'll just use this I'll pour a little off just to give you an idea um, that as well isn't clear but it's well carbonated that's for sure but, Excuse me. There we are. That is the bock and oh very much like a dunkel or a dunk certainly a dunkel I've had before. Uh, this came out uh yeah seven percent. This is um the basic the recipe from the Bible, traditional bock and just switch the yeast for the Nova Yang for the Nova Lager. Fermentation wise, this was at five days at 14 degrees, then three days at 17 degrees, and then three days at three degrees before being kegged. And I kegged it well oh, when did I keg it? it? Must have been the weekend. Um so, no, it was Tuesday. Uh back Tuesday? Yeah, I think I kegged it this on Tuesday. Just gone. So, two days ago. Aromas all. All lovely caramel, malty aroma. Flavour. Rich, toffee, caramel. Um, touch of almost um, cherry. Um, berry fruits. Kind of fruitiness to it and then clean clean as a whistle uh, finished at 1.015 um, so it's got a bit of body but it, it, it finishes clean and for the starting gravity it's it's reasonably crisp for a for what it is a 7% finishing at 1.015 it's reasonably crisp so that's the traditional bock. That's the Pilsner. That's the Nova Lager yeast. And today I did a brew. As you probably see, I've got my balloon in the background there. Um, <coughs> an alien balloon using that to fill with the CO2. Which so when I call crash, it just sucks it back in. Keeps CO2 on there without sucking air in. So. Today I did my um, Lost Umlauts Kolsch again using um, the same hops, same malts, it's um, Sabro as I did last time. Pardon me, that was using USO5 originally. This, pardon me, is again, this is the third beer onto that same yeast cake. Um, it may come out a little darker obviously because I did just brew that on it and that's um I poured as much out of as can. There's a, there's a hell of a lot of yeast. And I will be, when this is finished, taking some and um, putting some in. Um I think I'll put some in this little kilner. Obviously that'll need a clean. It's a bit dirty and dusty. Been sat on the shelf for ever. I've never actually used these. I've got two of these and I've still never used them. The plan was to put yeast in them, so I'll get some of that Nova Lager yeast, put it in put it in uh, the fridge in the house um, so I've got a little bit more 
I'll see how it goes. See if I can keep it going a bit and see what happens with it. Um, so yes, that is how the brewing's been going. As I said, this this one there's now there's so much yeast in there now. This is going to go off like a rocket when it goes. And um, the uh, bog, literally, it forced its way up the pipe and round. It, it just went mental. The bog really did. This I expect to do the same. Doesn't have maybe um, the richness. I don't know. It, it should be all right. I mean, it's pilsner malt and uh, carapils in there, uh, but there isn't as much um, as there was obviously in the bock because obviously that, that turned out at uh, being a seven percenter. So we have a little catch scratching at the door for some reason. What? No, sorry. It just must have been and ran away. Okay, so yeah, I expect this to go off like a rocket. I've set this one at 15 degrees for three days, and that should be more than enough. Then one day at, I think, 18 degrees, and then three days at three degrees. And I'd be interested to see how the clarity is on that, because when I did it with the USO5, the clarity was brilliant. It really did come clear uh, very quickly. Uh, the lager hasn't, but then I really pushed this. Well, I say I pushed it. I didn't. I pushed it in uh, um, way beyond what a normal lager yeast would do. Uh, having watched uh, Dickie's video yesterday, which he uh, discussed it with the Lalamond uh, guy, who's in charge of the UK and Scandinavia sales for Lalamond. He was talking about this yeast and basically I, I wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary. This is pretty straightforward. Um, but attenuation is maybe about 80%. It does. Uh, and flocculation is, they say, about medium. A lot of people get a clear beer. I haven't as yet, but um, either that or that. But they will come clear. They just take a little bit of time, as you would expect with a lager, but you don't need to. I'm quite happy with that, that as it is, personally. You know, it's, it's got a, it's a lager. It's a, I made a lager. Oh, and it's bloody nice. So that, what's coming up next? As I say, I've got the colch in there. Um, I did. Uh, I don't know if I've got the book. No, I haven't. Um, this is a homebrew book that has. Um, I've, I've shown it on here before that I'd only just got recently at a charity shop find for a couple of quid. Um, and it has quite a few German beers, and one of them was the Dunkel. The only problem with the book is there is no mention of alpha acids or IBUs in any of the recipes so yesterday I sent a Facebook message to one of the writers uh, I found her on Facebook and she's the, the brewer uh, and writer for the book and I messaged her to see if she could give me any idea on the alpha acids I mean they have a list of hops in the, in the book and it gives an, sort of a not an average alpha acid, but it gives the kind of variance of the alpha acids that you can expect from each hop. And if I don't hear back, I probably might, when I do come to do a dunkel, go with sort of the mid point of the range that they say uh, and treat that as possibly how they went. We'll see how it goes. Um, if not, then it turns out shit. Gonna burn the bloody book. No, no. Um, I don't know. But anyway, so I'm waiting to hear back from her about that. Um, hopefully she might get back in touch. I mean, she might not check Facebook much. She might not bother looking at these messages. It might come up for spam or whatever. I don't know. But it was worth a try, I thought, just to see if I could get some uh, advice on that. Because it's a, it's a 
it, the recipes look really interesting and really good, um, but that's such a failure. Not putting the IBUs in and the alpha acids or the alpha acids, um, it really is a failure. Do you know? I mean, editing wise, could have done better. needed this um, so I did the brew today as I say uh, I did that sort of this morning to the afternoon but at the same time I, I got started doing a few jobs you know how it is you got a mash on you got an hour to kill while you wait so I mowed the lawn uh, that, well, all three lawns I've got three lawns they're not massive but it takes a little bit of time and after that I was like right what am I gonna do now I've been meaning to paint picnic table so I was like ah, I could start that do a bit of that whilst I'm brewing uh, so I did started that and finished it then got to the boil blah uh, I, I did most of the picnic table during the mash got to the boil uh, did the mash out did the sparge put it onto boil got onto the boil finished the picnic table and was like well I've got the, the, the painting bug <laughs> You know, you start doing something like that, you're painting, you feel like, ah, oh, look, you can see where your progress, you can see what you've done, and it feels good, because you're like, I've done this, This I can see something, I've done it, and this is what I see, it's done. And uh, so I was like, ah, oh, what can I do now? Front gate, I'll do the front gate, it's only small, it won't take me long. Did the front gate, then I was like, ah, must paint, must paint, must paint. Um, by then, the boil was over, so I... Finished up the brew, put everything cleaned up, got into the fermenter, cleaned everything down, put away, uh, and then did the back gates, which is, which is a biggish job. They're um, big swing gates, sort of like you get a, a farm kind of things for um, our driveway, so I can park on the drive and then shut it. We usually got it for when Dylan was little. Uh, stop him escaping. Um, so yeah, they, they, I paint them every so often. The last time I painted them was actually during COVID. And we were on lockdown because um, I remember seeing one of my friends walk past while I was painting, and we were talking about stuff. I made Mike. Mike. Um, that weird noisy creature just walked past us. My eldest Dylan just talking about uh, so yeah so they needed painting and so I did them and then I was like ah and looked at the shed and thought no <laughs> let's stop now it's getting near tea time um, or dinner time if you live down south I don't and so I thought nah I'm not gonna pay this that paint the shed it'll take me half the night to do that so I stopped but I am starting to feel it now Get, aching a bit, bending and squatting and all that while painting. So I've been looking forward to this little beauty. I have to say, um, I have no, I have no issues with this yeast whatsoever. Nothing. Nada. Not a zip. Um, it's brilliant. If you want a clean, crisp beer, perfect um to come and i think i said this earlier uh the dunkles down is an option if i hear back i'd like to do that uh another is i'd like to do like a, a cerveza type beer uh, like a corona talking of lockdowns and coronavirus uh, i'd like to do like a corona style but instead of you know like when you have a corona you put a lime in why bother why not put the lime in the ginger beer? As in, I'll add a bit of citra. Maybe a touch of sabro as well. A little bit of sabro to get um, a bit of bite. I do love the sabro now. I've really started to come to really like sabro. It, it, I really don't get any coconut. I think it's sabro that had the coconut. A little touch of coconut for some people. For me, no. I, I just get like um, pithy pithy citrus like grapefruit and the pith basically <coughs> which 
I kind of like that it adds a little edge and then give it a week or two uh, and the beer's mellowed a bit it's not as sweet as I think Citra I find Citra I love Citra Citra is like my I have to have Citra I have to have Citra in at all times because that's my go-to hop I love it used to be mosaic in the early days but I don't know I've kind of gone off mosaic and I don't know why there's there's no reason why it's just, it's just like I prefer Citra I just prefer that sharper uh, and then Sabro is even sharper for me um, I know some people get that coconut so, and there's a little bit of a rounded edge to the taste I, I, I I do think in sharpnesses and edges and smoothness for taste at times. Um, it's just the way my thoughts work with my tastes. You may have different views and that's fine. All views are good. That was a good pint. I mean, look at that. And last year I have my five beers I wanted to brew dinner I did that and one of them was a Pilsner and I didn't do it done it now this year um, a second one was going to be an MP. no that's probably not going to happen this year either although it may it may I won't I won't say never ever because I have to say this Bock this has set me off on another edge and coming back to Lalamond for the Nova Lager and the yeast um, I have their farmhouse which apparently is another one of their hybrid yeasts um, I need to look more into that one because uh, that looks really interesting I really want to do a farmhouse a dry farmhouse wow who'd ever thought we're going to live in such amazing times for brewing who would ever thought that we get this what we have I mean from Kike to Nova Lager farmhouse dries and the grandfather and whoa to be a brewer now a home brewer that is it, it, it's just amazing I have to say it's absolutely amazing I mean when I first started brewing and I was probably I was was 18 and I bought from Boots for those in the UK um, I, I don't know why I say in the UK because Boots is obviously an American company now or was it always um, but they they used to sell homebrew stuff and I bought a homebrew kit thing and made beer and it was absolutely awful and I didn't let it do its thing enough and yeah from that to what we have now what a it's like going from um, aviation to reaching the moon that kind of step up uh, <laughs> I know that's a bit um, bit of a steep profundity but for me I think from what you used to do with the, your cans of wort um, as home brewers from your co-op and put it in your bin and then you put it into bottles with a little bit of sugar maybe from that to this all grain world with the yeasts and everything and the adjuncts and the way the malts are now um, I, I do feel it is a step from learning to fly to going to the moon such progress and I'm loving every second of it I'm enjoying this what can I say if you haven't tried the Nova Lager yeast um, and you are doubting it because um, I'm usually quite cynical uh, about these things but oof, no do it try it have a go with it do what you want with it it is a real game changer it really is Um, there's no phenolics in there um, actually there is 
<laughs> not for Nolix, but I'm going to say there's no real, it's clean, but that has, oh, some lovely aromas. That is just red apple. There's the red apple. I could get the red apple. Hey, just a little touch of red apple there. It's a yeast for the future. Oh, um, right. I'll probably bore you now to death with all that about that because it's 20 minutes, and so I really don't have much more to say. I've covered the lager, I've covered the bark, I've covered the colch. Um, I still haven't said what I'm going to brew next, but I think I'm going to be using the farmhouse. I really think I'm going to, have a, I'm going to sit down, do some research, um, look at what the farmhouse yeast can do, and come up with a, a recipe. Because, as I probably said earlier, I've had this book for years. Since I first started brewing, I've had this book, and because I really wanted to get into that kind of, uh, so I'm going to have a look in here as well. There's quite a few recipes, um, and the question is, do I do a saison or not, or do I do a beer de gas? Because they're very similar. Um, I think I can use. Uh, Grisette's mentioned in here. Um, Dicky mentioned he was going to do a Grisette. I might, there's, a, there's Grisettes in here. I might have a look and see. Because that, I do need a range of alcohol levels because obviously this at 7% is uh, not very good for a week there. Um, you know, sometimes you do need to tone it down a bit. Just a bit. Anyway, there. I'll have a look at that, do some research, do some thinking, and we'll maybe have a chat about this next time, maybe on Sunday. Who knows? Because it's got a long weekend, haven't we? May Day Bank Holiday. Lots of beer to come and drink. I've got three full taps, almost. Um, the one that I haven't mentioned, obviously, is the Carry On Up The Gesture, which is the over. I mentioned it last time so anyway that's still on uh, and then the Bocanora and then another jacket so thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one cheers